Hey everyone, this is the first episode of RNZ's new politics podcast, Caucus. Uh, I'm Tim Walked and I run the, polis- the uh, podcast unit here at RNZ. And I'm Lisa Owen, I work on The Nation and News Hub. And I'm Guy Nespin, a co-host of Morning Report for my day job. And um, look, on the Caucus agenda this week, we've got uh, coal- coalition building and bashing. Who's been nice to whom and who's not been so nice. We've got the return of Shane Jones. We might get to Todd Barclay and Labour interns as on the way through. Um, but let's start with New Zealand First and Shane Jones and how that's coming together. We say that New Zealand First is always likely to be at the heart of coalitions. This is what we talk about, that these guys are set up this year for the Kingmakers. Why do we say that? Let's spell that out. Well, I think that um, with the polling where it is, with New Zealand First polling at 10%, it's hard to see someone being able to form a government without them because... Traditionally, Winston Peters has campaigned extremely well. When we used to run Colmar Brunton polls back at TVNZ days a few years back, he, he would quite often double his support during the campaign. Mm. Now, I'm not saying he's going to go from 10 to 20, Starting but if he's, if, if he's sitting, you know, 80 plus days out at 10%, then he's going to be in a pretty strong position. So unless National can hold up in the mid to late 40s, he is going to have a really, really strong role. And, you know, these conditions are set up pretty well for him. He's going around the regions. He is putting a lot of effort and vigour into it. He's looking dangerous. Yeah, he's out there in his bus, his V for Victory bus, and the regions, I reckon, are going to be really important. And we saw that, obviously, when he won Northland. He got his hands on that because, while there was a particular incident, you had you had a um, an MP there who sort of disappeared off the radar. People were quite disgruntled. But he went back to that area and told them, basically, I care, I'm going to do something for you. But he also had an event, an unusual thing that happened that got him over the line, I would argue. And uh, does Shane Jones have that? Well, that's a question. And I just thought we should note, this has been recorded um, on uh, Thursday evening, so events will change by the time you yep. you listen to this. Um, but today, he was he was in Motueka, I think, last night. He's cruising down the west coast today and tomorrow. Um, th- he's going Look into out, these, he's on the he's way. He's going into these towns who don't see politicians turn up to stuff. And he'll say, I, I, here I am. And he turns I'm the guy who, who actually comes to listen to you. And he turns up as a rock star, yeah. and we've all seen it. He's mm. a rock star. He is probably better known as a face than Bill English and Andrew Little. He is, his recognition, almost everyone knows who Winston Peters is, and he puts a party on. He's got jokes. He's he, got the joke. you know, Those yeah, same jokes he's been using for 20 years. They, they love him, and he turns up, he, he turns a crowd. And we, 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 we started talking about Shane Jones. Now, that's what he brings as well. He brings some star power. He has negatives as well, yeah. um, and we've, uh, you know, he hasn't he hasn't got a great record of success in electorates. Well, he's zipped. We, we know he's that. Zip for three. He, he, he's zero that. Let's go yeah. through yeah. that. Yeah. He's he zipped for three. So he stood twice, twice in, in Northland. Northland, and he bummed out there. He only got about twenty five percent of the vote. And remember, he's up against John Carter, though, who in the day was well known in Northland. And, and he got half of John Carter in, in 05 and half of John Carter in oh eight. So yeah, not exactly. A great and then Tamaki. He, he he increased his vote there. He was short of um, Peter Sharples, I think, by about, what, between seven and 900 votes. So it was yeah. a much closer rate. But that's zip for three, and he acknowledges that. And the funny thing was, I reread his valedictory speech the other day, and he <laughs> time, loathed... Girl. He loathes <laughs> campaigning and door knocking. He talked about how Helen Clark sent him out to knock on doors and he was like, oh, this is not for me kind of scenario. That is yeah. true. And people have pointed that out, um, that, 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 you know, hard work and, and shoe leather is not one of his, his strong points. I would put it, put, point out that the, the Labour leader is zipped from two in, in two electric battles. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessary to, to discount no. him. Also, the other thing is, obviously, they want party votes. It doesn't really matter, does it, if he wins Whangarei or not. No, but it's a but pride thing, isn't it? It is a pride and, thing. And, and, and yep. Winston Peters... It is a pride thing. And I think if you look at the numbers, you kind of, in that Whangarei seat, there's been a, anything from a 10,000 to 15,000 majority for for Labour over the years. That is a lot... Whangarei for national. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a lot of, that's a lot of votes to claw back. And yes, in Northland, it was kind of around that as well, but you had a slightly different set of circumstances. It was and a Winston, very particular yeah, moment in time. Winston yeah. turned that into about a 4,000 majority. 
majority. So Shane Jones really has to grab votes from everybody, including National. Does he have that appeal? Does he have that appeal? He, well, look, National's been getting 20,000 in the last election. You put New Zealand First, Labour and the Greens all together, they get 13,000. So yeah, they have to get a lot of votes. He can definitely take votes off National. He's, he's got a good business record, especially in the North. He, he can talk about his fishery deals. He can say that I've been around the Pacific, um, you know, dealing with, with statesmen. So who does he appeal to he then? Can, who, who do we think he appeals to? I think he appeals to those um, centrist left or leaning right, those centrists really. I mean, he's part of that team in Labour that they have been losing. The David Shearers, the Clayton Cosgroves, uh, the people who uh, were more in the centrist vein of things and were possibly slightly pro-business, but I guess claim to have a social conscience as well. I, I guess he fits in that sort of area. And if you look, and he, if and you he look back... crime when he started, but came back on oh, yeah, the, yeah, at the yeah. weekend, it was crime, right, he was talking yeah. about? You go, you say, if you look back, he used to kick into the banks, he liked to yeah, kick into the supermarkets. supermarkets. Yeah. supermarkets. So, so he's, 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 he's playing for that battle crowd. I think people yeah. are right, and critics have pointed this out, that the media um, has a bit of a love affair with Shane Jones, yes. and that um, that's not always backed up by the evidence. And you, you're right to point that out. But if you look back, if you, if you took yourself back a few years and you were told that... Um, Shane Jones was going to be in New Zealand first. You know, we, we've been, the idea is socialised now because it was the worst kept secret, yeah. um, right? But he was one of their star players, wasn't he? Mm. He went for the leadership, he was he was yeah. a cabinet minister. He, he's, and he said, I will never come back. He oh, sure, yeah. No, no, he did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, a politician. but he also yeah. said, he was also one of those guys in the, in the Labour days where he said, we've got to start with a four, we've got to get back to 40. He was a yeah. broad church And we'll talk Labourer. about Labour a bit more um, exactly. a, a, little, a little bit later. But it was interesting, wasn't it, this week, um, the reaction to Shane Jones from the different parties. Mm. Andrew Little's reaction was interesting, wasn't it? He, he, well, he, he kind he of had wanted, the olive branch. Yeah, out there, claimed, didn't he? claimed him back almost, but it was it well, was let's, kind let's of interesting. A, let's do because we've, we've got lovely Blair in the, in the control room here who can play the Andrew Little one, not the the other one. Can we play the Andrew Little grab? The political return of Shane Jones. Are you anticipating that that could be a serious way of votes being taken from Labour to New Zealand first? No, I mean, uh, Shane Jones will bring a fair amount of intellectual grunt to New Zealand first. That's good. Shane remains a good friend of Labour. Uh, he will most likely be back in Parliament. I mean, that's a good thing, I think, it, you know, from the Labour Party's point of view. What about how all this shakes down? I mean, what are the chances of New Zealand first with Shane Jones in it working with Labour? I think, uh, you know, we have a very strong relationship with New Zealand First right now. Uh, Shane Jones's presence can only strengthen that. Shane has, you know, good strong links with some of our MPs, um, and I expect that that will continue. So Shane, if, if anything, strengthens the bridge that we have with New Zealand First. So I don't see any problem with that at all. That was Andrew Little talking to Susie Fergus on Morning Report uh, this week. Um, Andrew Little is very yeah, keen on him. Yeah, it was kind of like, well, <laughs> if you're so keen on him, why isn't he in your party? That's kind of interesting. But he's obviously selling it like, OK, we've got an in here. This guy's still friends with um, Labour. And yeah, Shane Jones says he is still friends with Labour, but he actually points a little bit to the right of left as being his friends. He talks about, oh, my, my mates are kind of, there's a few of them there, but Cher is gone now. He talks about Cosy. Clayton Cosgrove, yep. um, who is retiring at the at, yep. at this election. So the people that he relates to most in terms of Shane Jones and Labour, that's a diminishing pull. So and Guy, you've got a point about what that means for Labour, don't you? I just think that um, you know I just question the strategy of saying you know, it has to be a three-way government, mm. you know, and I think he's been pursuing that um, strategy for some time and I'm not entirely convinced by it as a, a strategy. If you look back to the template of how Labour has won in the past, 99, 02, 05, all under Helen Clark, it's basically you get to 40%. And then at that point, you bring in the smaller parties and you have choice. It might be United Future if they're doing well, or it might be New Zealand First, it might be the Greens, but you have, you have options. By saying that it's Labour, New Zealand First and Green, and we're going to need all those to form a government, I think um, you're giving away a little bit of your major party clout at that point and, 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 and surrendering yourself to the idea that you yep. are not going to be 
a 35 North party. Or, now, that or might you're be just dealing with the reality. Exactly, or you're accepting reality. <laughs> well, you're wait, giving yeah, it but, away. You, maybe mm. you're giving away the dream, or maybe you're just dealing with the facts in front of you, which says that, you know, you're Andrew Little, you come in, you've had your Phil Goff time, you've had your David Shearer, you've had your David Cunliffe. I'm not a... I'm not close to 40%. I just wonder, though, that having that strategy and that mindset um, perpetuates that. Well, it does. You know, I mean, if, if you're... What, if, you mean you present yourself as a loser from the get-go? Well, or you are giving away your votes unintentionally. Because, I mean, people think that, that MMP is somehow some sort of, you know, we're going to be friends with these people and these people. It's not. It's an intensely competitive yeah, absolutely. system. And if you are saying, oh, we've got this lovely arrangement with the Greens and New Zealand First are great too, then what are you actually telling your voters? Because the message used to be only a vote for yeah. Labour can change the government. That's what they said in 99 or some variation of that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what I'm kind of hearing is, oh, well, we've got this nice um, bunch of three parties here and you can vote for any one of those. Now, I know he's not saying that. I don't want to be unfair to him. He's not exactly saying that. But that's kind of the message I wonder that might leak out. But and, and those votes yeah. that he wants... Um, he's saying, oh, we're mates with New Zealand First. New Zealand First may well turn around and go with the other guys. Yes, they, they did it in 1996. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, they, they, they could well do, do it, it again. again. You've got no guarantee that New Zealand First is your friend at all. No. And they're explicit about it. Let's be fair to New Zealand First too. They say, we, we don't numbers. tell you before beforehand. We, we mm. we'll make our decision when the votes are cast. So but, but I think it's risky. Yeah, and the other Labor. thing is... is is how realistic is that, that they're, they're all going to be holding hands and singing Kumbaya because, is it realistic? New Zealand First, Greens and Labour, given <laughs> things that have been <laughs> spoken well, in, in, in recent history, particularly about the Greens. Well, I like the idea. The, the idea of a, a Labour, New Zealand First, Greens government is a wonderful theory. Um, but like dark, ma dark matter, we've got no proof that it actually no, could exist. No. It might not hold together um, because <laughs> it's, it, it, you, know, you, you put the numbers together and you put the policy yes. together. Yes, it could you do. Can, and yeah. you can do it. And yeah. you can do it. But but there's but there's a lot of personality. There's a lot of history. Um, I guess the counter argument to what mm. you're saying though is that you look at this election and you say this election this time round, I'm not close to forty. I need to be able to come second to national because Labour's only ever going to come second and still present look like a government in waiting. The only way I can convince people of that is that I'm going to need the Greens so we need to look like we can work together. We need to look like a yeah, government in waiting but or else we're just going to be going round and round the but same what old happens, track. What happens with that when, when one of your partners in this triangle is kind of nipping at your heels in terms of the votes, so do they then say, hmm, the Prime Ministership should be mine. The Prime Ministership. Do you want to talk about the Prime Ministership? Well, yeah, no, what happens? <laughs> what happens if... So you're saying um, maybe it's not as ambitious a message as it should be from Labour in terms of aiming for the vote. So if you all, if you need a three-way coalition and things start to get closer than, say, the you know the lead party well, would like, that's right. who gets the big well, jobs? Well, 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 that's right. And it is... There's an outside possibility that... Winston Peters could be the largest party in in that in that relationship, isn't there? Yep. Yeah, look, it's it's it's, it's 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 unlikely, but there's a there, it's blipping away on the radar as a possibility. Now, at that point, you have to ask sure. who who would be the prime minister. It's it's not. But even so, if they're but, but even if they're five, ten percentage points back. The Prime Minister goes on the table. I mean, we learned this in the ninth floor, right? Yeah. He put it on the table That's with right. Helen Clark. The guy put it on the table with <laughs> Helen Clark. When he, he was well back. He had 17 MPs in 1996. Yeah. 17. They got about 13% of the vote. Yeah. And he wanted to be the Prime Minister. So make no mistake, that ambition unfulfilled is still what he's he's aiming at. It's unlikely that he'd be given it. But here's a question too. I don't want to make things tough for our media bosses. <laughs> but what do you do in the election leaders' debates? We'll be, we'll be trying to hold some. TVNZ, TV3 will be holding them. What happens when Winston Peters is polling higher than Andrew Little in the preferred Prime Minister stakes and his party is creeping up close to Labour? I'll tell what you, calam do? calamity happens. <laughs> and then some <laughs> of them start going to, going to court and say, <laughs> we want it. They go to court. Well, they go to court and, 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 we are, and it's funny and it's, and it's interesting. We've been there. But, but he will be, if he hasn't, he'll be listening to this now, he will be... He will want Do to be in those leaders' look, debates. So one of the good and things actually, about this they'd podcast... They'd make them a bit lively, wouldn't they? they with would. Andrew Little and Bill English? Hey, look, one of the good things about this podcast is we can tell some small stories. Now, look, we're last, last time... I don't yeah. think I'm going out of school here. Last election... I tried to get up a four-way because I think that's there's a reasonable debate for national that is, by Labour. By the way, four people in a debate. In a debate. Yes. Yes. Labour, New Zealand, Labour, National, New Zealand First Greens. 
because they are, you can argue the gap between them and the miners is bigger yeah, but the big than the gap between the middles nice. and, the, and the bigs. Mm. But the, the big parties just rule that out. They think it diminishes, they say, no. their, it diminishes their mana and kudos to be included in but a debate of, of that view, size. They I want to see, see, no. voter, I see those four For parties sure. face off. All I'm saying is that if, if, if New Zealand First continues to rise, and Winston Peters' personal numbers are continuing to rise. Yep. The the networks and the media organisations are going to struggle to leave them out of the leaders' debates. But, but let's let's come back because Lisa, you mentioned about about Shane Jones and and talking to uh, making nice and and but yeah. not being nice to the Greens in the past. And again, Blair, come in with uh, the grab from um, Shane Jones on the Nation this weekend. So in terms of forming a government, potentially forming a government after this election, the thing is Labor could probably come with the Greens and you've said before it would be a long day in hell mm. if you served under um, a but, Green government. <coughs> is that still your position? Uh, well, um, uh, the garrulous Aussie Norman has gone. He's where he belongs in the Greenpeace. So I wouldn't, uh, I don't think you should treat historic statements as being static facts. That's mm. the first thing. But Matidi is still there. Matidi Ature was there when you made that comment and she still is. And I mean, she once described you as being sexist and said you were a 19th century man living in the 21st century. Would you be happy for her to be one of your bosses? Oh, well, I look forward to debating with her in the election, etc. And I didn't get too hung up about various rhetorical missiles that are fly, fl uh, flung around. But in terms of forming so the next government... So you've mellowed about the Greens, have you? Uh, oh, Oh, well, you're seeing a... Uh, you, you, we must move on from the imperfect part of my career. <laughs> <laughs> And this is why you like him. Because exactly. okay, okay, uh, he said, what did he say there? Almost nothing, but it was beautiful, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> but you picked up on what he did say, was that he did not do what he what he said before and talk, compare the Greens to Molly Hawks and various yeah. other things. He said, yeah, they're not too bad. That's the subtext. So is that... And, that is not what Winston says. Winston's no, policy so is still I, to kick into the green. I so what does that not, mean? I do not know what to read into that. Yeah. I mean, he was he was sort of shuffling it off by saying it's okay because Russell Norman's not there anymore. But the the policies are still there. The party is still there. Yeah, Matilda I mean, Ture is still yeah, there. All we can go back on is history, which has had Winston Peters keeping green parties out of government. It may it may change this time, um, it, it may not. It's interesting to see the Greens already feeling the heat over immigration. Now we know that Winston yeah. Peters in New Zealand First is very hot on this issue. Labor's been hot on it too, right? So yep. there's yep. some symmetry. And the Greens got uncomfortable um, over I the week with really this. I was really interested and, in this. And, and, and they said, look, we got it wrong. I'm sorry. They apologised for their policy of having um, a population-based um, immigration policy where it's just 1% of the population. Yep. I think he actually broke it on your show, yep. didn't he? Yep. On he the nation. So let's just go back. So this was the Greens last year. Yeah, um, October, October of last year. So yeah. came on the nation and said 1% um, is, and he's right, it's historically about, um, you talk to the Paul Spoonleys of the world and so yep. forth, it's about how New Zealand grows over, over long term. Um, he said, let's keep it back to 1%. Let's keep it at that. Um, and so when there are more New Zealanders coming back, we cut down the, the new New Zealanders. Yeah. And vice versa. And that was the interesting thing because when you take into account the New Zealanders returning, what that would have meant would have been only about 17 to 20,000 um, immigrants coming in from overseas. Now, when you look that's at those number, numbers... That's a 20,000. 20,000. That's even below what the top that Andrew Little knocked off, you know, saying we're getting about 75,000 at the moment. He's saying crack at about twenty to 30,000 down from that. So that would have put the Greens 30,000 below Labour. When you think of it like that and, in raw and now numbers, they've jettisoned the policy entirely. Now they've jettisoned the policy. Well, he, he, he said, he said, I'm sorry, I used that number. And yeah. I don't no, imagine, but he didn't actually jettison but, the policy, did he? Well, he did actually. Yeah, oh, he, he did. did. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he did. He, he did. did. He, he's got. He's jettisoned the policy, and it, now he's saying we're not going to talk about numbers. He he he, he he's bailed on this fight. He's completely bailed on it, and I wonder how much was. Um, some of the younger MPs coming in too, because I know they were yeah, uncomfortable. Maybe. I remember interviewing yeah. uh, Chloe mm. Smallbrook about this yeah. as well, and they seemed to be a little uncomfortable with the policy. They hated 
the pushback they got. They, they the hated being seen. Uh, you know, that would be their worst nightmare. Anti-immigrant or, or, or in any sense racist. That they, they were really, really upset yeah. about that. And, the, and, they've, and they've bailed on it. But I looked back at the transcript of the interview with James Shaw when he announced that policy and he was raising some really legitimate well, questions legitimate around issues. that. Like, you know, infrastructure, we're heaving at the oh, seams sure. in terms of schools and things like that. He talked about the fact that he thought, what was it, that um, house prices going up, I haven't got the figure here, he said house prices were going up about 6 to 12, 6 to 12 percent based for, on... For 1 percent of growth. For 1 percent of growth. Yeah. So, you know, he has identified no, he some really... He, yeah, you know, yeah. yes. He, and didn't, I, he didn't just... It no, wasn't just he meant what he said. Yeah. 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 yeah, and so, you know, and he was saying we can't be doubling our our population, which is what we're doing at the, at the moment in about every 35 years, when in the past it was like every 70 years. We can't yeah. be doing with that. We so can't where does cope. this leave us then with this MOU? Oh, can, right? Mm. So where, where, where does it get us? Because, you know, so... Obviously, that Labor's different. policy becomes the default policy for the Greens, does it? If they're backing away from their own policy. Well, this is the thing. I mean, the, okay, they are independent parties with different policies, and at least yeah. give them credit for that. They yeah. didn't when they signed this MOU. They didn't. It wasn't a, a no, a, no, a, a takeover and merger, no, not a merger right. and acquisition, right. was it? But there was a sense that you were going to see a combined government in waiting, right? Yes. But so when we see. The immigration policy is now very, very different. We saw um, different voting on, on the budget and the accommodation allowances and the budget yeah. increases for, for welfare, um, different stances taken on that. Is it, is it worth much now, this MOU? Well, it, it, what, what is it? Is it worth it? It's still worth it. Isn't that still sending the signal we can work together? I mean, when it actually comes to the crunch and all of these issues, they just say, hey, we'll work together on this, we like each other, we'll figure it out after the election and we'll, we'll accommodate New Zealand first if we have to. So I don't think that actually necessarily undermines all of that. The harder bit is for the Greens. I still think this is a bit like um, GE for the Greens. Um, it's, it's the one hand. On the other hand, they want to be pro-science, but they want to be pro-nature. So GE always gets them in a muddle. This now, immigration has now got them. They want, mm. they are a population-based party. Yes. They like population is, policies. They like open spaces and small That's countries. Right. On the other hand, they want to be, they want to, they can't afford, they don't think they can say any more to immigrants, we don't want so many of you because we're going to be offensive. Yeah. That's really but that's this, an interesting point. They're stuck. Yeah. But this MOU, and we got it in front of us, the, the only thing that it really was to achieve, as Tim says, to show that they can work together and to not to have the same situation that they did at the last election where they kind of blew apart with a couple of incidents in the very... Uh, Russell Norman right at the end saying yeah. maybe we could work with National... But, yeah, yep. you, where you don't have any anyone you know, going to DEFCON 4 or dropping a bomb that you don't that's see right. coming in the final days to the election. And I suppose in that sense, it's worked. Even though, it hasn't grown hang the on. vote though, has it? No, because they're all eating each other's babies, yeah. aren't they, in terms yeah. of votes? I mean, it hasn't, I don't it, know. It, it, hasn't, it, hasn't grown the, it hasn't grown the vote at all. So this is the, this is the point for um, when we come down to, to numbers, isn't it? There's a big blue chunk that's, that's sitting around 44% potentially, which is the national vote. And there seems no, to be a fortress around it. And nobody can really talk about a change of government until that starts coming down by at least a couple of points, yeah? I think fair? that's pretty fair, actually. If, if, if national drop into the early 40s, then it's really game on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that is the level that Clark won all her elections at, you know, 40 mm. 40%. But they national doesn't have, uh, you know, a sizable smaller party. They've just got the minnows, haven't they? Um, so, look, so I mean... So do these parties have to wait for something to go wrong or with national, or can you actively get that vote? Well, Do you I know think, what I mean? I Which think, is yeah, it? You I wait for a stuff up or you go out us, and get it yourself? It probably brings us to Barclay and the, um, and the handling of that. Yeah, I, 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 think, that. I think that um, eyes would have lit up at the way Bill English um, handled that among the opposition parties. Just a little glint, just a door opening that maybe we could take this guy down. Because Bill English, is when he's good, he's very good. You get him on social policy, on the economy, he's very, very strong. Mm. When a crisis erupts, especially on some sort of scandal, he is not flexible no, and agile like quick. John Key was. And he can get himself really in trouble. He can get bogged down. And we saw that, the way he could not close that scandal down. Now, I don't know that it's going to, that scandal is going to yeah. run to, to, to hurt him at the election. But if it happens on the campaign trail, and remember what campaigns look like. They're in shopping so malls. Quick. They're shopping malls. Yep. Yeah. The media runs to the shopping mall. The the politician goes yep. out with a selfie and talks <laughs> to people. Now, if the media scrum, Adam, every day is on something that he's struggling with, 
you know, for days and days, and that's the lead story on the news and on the radio and, and in the papers. That's where you see, we'll that, see cracks, potentially. That's where you can see cracks, and that's where the vote could slip yes, away. Yes. You know, you start to go, oh, I don't know about this guy. And, and it, so it's not, I don't think anyone's going to go into the booth and go, oh, no, not Bill Lynch because the way he handled um, Barclay. I mean, it no. doesn't work like that. No. It's it's the loss of confidence in, in someone. It's the feeling that... You, 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 you might not be being told the and, truth. And, and you're right about the the eyes glinting. I, I've been talking. I talked to some people in opposition parties just recently, and they pointed to the example of the Christchurch fires. Um, when I think you asked him and said, "Are you off to Christchurch?" That morning report, anyway. Um, Are you off to Christchurch today? Um, and he was like, "Oh, I'll, I'll see if I've got time. I'll, I'll have a look at it." Eight. And like, and yeah. exactly, <laughs> His wrong answer, right? There. Bad answer. Yeah. And straight, and, and within half an hour, he was. Booked mm. the, the press statement out. He was on his way to Christchurch. Yes, I do remember. But that. he's just not that nimble. You can't no, have someone not. managing you in terms of a media response right there when Guyan says you're in the shopping mall or you have got your terrible um, health and safety hat on walking yeah. through a factory. You're high you're high high yeah. Yeah. And your net, and gals and your coming net. at you with some question, yes or no, <laughs> and, and your eyes are going everywhere. And, and, and this, this, so this we is don't what think the Barclay thing, Barclay thing's going to stop with the police when the police come in. I tell you, it's interesting with the police because the police might have a Comey moment. Yes, yes, they could. They might yeah. have a Comey they moment. Could. You've got, eight, how many days does it go? 80 odd days. Yeah. So it's a police are going to have to decide, am I going to, am I going to, it's the Comey thing. Am do I, I, am yeah. I, I going to do it the information and now? And I'm going to do it now. Or, or not. And yeah. somewhere <laughs> in the campaign, you're back in there, and, and it, it depends. If people say, see it's um, employment dispute with some people in Gore, and I don't quite get it, mm. Or do they say the Prime Minister knew something and which possibly was law-breaking and didn't do anything about it? How, it depends how it's framed, yeah, right? You, it's framing. you can separate the two out. You can law-breaking say one Prime Minister or just some confusing thing I don't understand? Trust. Yeah, trust. Trust, that's what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, um, I was at a business function in Auckland where um, people had no interest or knowledge in this at all. And I'm mm. talking about one um, person who'd um, built a multi-million dollar business, very smart individuals, you know, they had mm. nothing about it. Then I went to Wellington, jumped in a cab, the guy knew all the main players in the store. <laughs> you know, so, so I didn't raise that little anecdote because, yeah. you know, you got you got to watch it. I mean, how much do, 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 do are some people, especially in Auckland, and it's the biggest, you know, it's the, obviously the biggest city and that's where a lot of the votes are, how much are they paying attention to something like that? My, my feeling with Barclay is that, it, it, it's more of a risk about if he if he does that again if he if he yeah. um, if he gets trapped like that again. It becomes a narrative, right? Yeah. yeah. A couple of minutes left. Let's talk about um, Labor and the Maori Party oh, because yeah. that's the other interesting thing this week. Oh, yes. Was Tuku Morgan on Morning Report, and um, we'll hear what he said to go on. Our game and our outcome that we seek is always to break the stranglehold that the Labor Party have held over the Maori seats and the Pacific Island uh, uh, community. What is distinct here, Guyon, is that we 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 you know, we understand the frustration of being oppressed uh, by uh, people like um, Andrew Little. So you know we're in charge of our own political bus. Well, hang on, how, how so hang on, how have you been oppressed by Andrew Little? Well, look, uh, we, we, uh, what is clear is that uh, Andrew Little uh, uh, has thrown his Māori um, his Māori MPs under the political bus. They don't give a stuff about uh, uh, Māori aspirations. He went pretty hard in that interview, didn't he? Sure um, yeah, he did. Oppression and there was a few other lines no, there cause too. No, because I was uh, <laughs> there. I was flapping around, getting ready for work, and it was kind of one of those moments where you go, oh, 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 oh. You know, it's like yeah. someone's like stabbing a little pin in you when you hear those words. And he was kind of using really visceral yes, kind of language. But I have to say, they need to get a t-shirt printed because I think it's an orchestrated campaign. This throwing Māori under the bus. Yeah. That is a phrase that they're kind of getting into the political. Political vernacular. They, um, he's used it. Uh, to Urero Flavel has used it. Shane Taurima has used it. All in interviews, it just gets sort of slipped in there. You know, it's like one other phrase, isn't it, Tim? What is it? Yeah. We're at the table. We're at the table. <laughs> and I, I just think on the front it should be, you know, Labour yeah. throws Māori under the bus. You on the back, it's like we're, we're at, the at the table. But he's he's an operator. Um, to Kuroi Dunga Morgan, isn't he? I mean, he's. Um, because what he was doing on that day, and the main purpose of that interview was he was announcing that he was going to team up with some Pacific candidates yeah. as as well. Which is interesting. I I, I went back and had a look at the Auckland Future because yeah, the, the so Pacific well. guys yeah, yeah, teamed yeah. up with Auckland yeah. Future on the right. This is the same Pacific crowd who went to John Key at the last election and said, "We'll um, campaign with." But they'd left Labor. They went yeah. to National. Now they've gone to the Maori Party. 
they're not pulling huge amounts of votes with them. And despite uh, Morgan saying we're neck and neck in those in, in mm. Manukau East and in Mangere, these are these are big majorities for Labour. Yeah, I, they realistically, yeah, they're got, not. And they've got um, some relatively high profile MPs in those yeah. communities who are well connected with their community and very visible. But I do find it interesting because you're hearing one thing from certain people in the Māori Party. But when I spoke to Hune Harawera a couple of weeks ago and said to him, "Hey, mate, can you work with Labour?" Um, if if you're in a government, and he was like, you know, we, I'm like Winston Peters. I'll, I'll make my mind up after the after the big day. But I said, you know, to Uradora is saying a lot of things about about Labour, and he said, go ask Marama what she thinks. Well, that's <laughs> right because she 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 came out and said that um, she was quite open. Yeah, and to, she has said that she's working with Labour. Labour. Yeah. So, so there is a bit of a mixed good message cop, bad there. cop going on there. Um, I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think it helps Labour to be in a fight with the Māori Party. I thought Andrew Little handled that quite well because he came on straight after. Super diplomatic, mm. and, and, he, and he didn't bite back, which I thought was good. Yeah. Uh, he's got himself in trouble before. Remember when he was saying it wasn't um, Kai Papa uh, Māori? Oh uh, yeah, he was saying yeah, or, or, or even that it wasn't Tikang, or um, I can't remember exactly the phrase that he used, but yeah. he got himself in a, in, a, in trouble. I thought he handled that quite well by. By not biting back at some pretty inflammatory Hosed it down stuff quite a bit. Um, from uh, so from Mario Party more. and Labour are certainly still battling a lot. Um, is that gonna muddy? It's not gonna look. It's not a good look for either of them, really. Is I it? don't think it really is. I can see why well, they are doing yeah, this. Yeah, but They're hang on. The same vote, you yeah. have said. You said that, like, as a headline thing, you need to get out there and scrap for every vote that's if true. you're a particular party. So, like, if you're saying Labour, get out there and scrap for every vote, that's what these guys are doing. Yeah, They're scrapping fair. for that's every fair. vote. Yeah. And um, they clearly see their main competition, obviously, in the in the I think Māori that's right. electorate. I, I think, I think that's right. Labor. I think you're right to point out my um, inconsistency there, too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do, do that a lot over the next 12 weeks, I hope, as we scrap um, for um, your time. Hey, guys, um, I'm just looking at the clock. We yep. got to go. Oh, we're out of time. Stomach's starting to rumble. That's right. Did we, did we, did we decide anything at Caucus? Caucus, uh, the, the motion for today is. It's carried. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whatever we'll go was. with that. Hey, thanks very much, Guy and Lisa. Um, we're going to do this every week until the election. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thanks heaps for listening. This is Caucus. Thanks for listening to Caucus, RNZ's new politics podcast. Claire Easton Farrelly and Blair Stadpole have been in the control room this week, making sure you can hear and see us properly. Our theme, Sting, has been created especially for Caucus by Copra Music. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. While you're there, please do rate us and review us. It does make a big difference to the algorithms. You can also listen back to Caucus at radioNZ.co.nz. Go to the podcasts and series page. You'll find Caucus and a whole bunch of other great podcasts there. Otherwise, we'll be back with you for more caucus next Thursday.